The United States Constitution has no provisions on how an incumbent president should be unseated. Losing an election and refusing to hand over power to the president-elect for a smooth power transition could lead to a constitutional crisis. The refusal of President Donald Trump to concede to Joe Biden's victory in 2020 U.S. election has raised uncertainty over power transition. Illustrating what will happen next, a critical analysis from the notion of swing states dispute, also known as battleground states, will be examined, cutting across Congress intervention through a contingent election, if needed, to provide the American people with an elected president. Also, the role of the Army in the 2020 United States election will be discussed. Swing States Disputes Donald Trump's campaign plans are to block results certification in the swing states in U.S. polls. Haven alleged on electoral fraud, then Trump's campaign has filed lawsuits in Arizona, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, demanding courts to avert state officials from certifying votes in these battleground states. If this dispute remains unresolved before December 8, the state legislatures will have a step in. Swing States Legislative Intervention as a result of state legislature intervention, the Republican-controlled state legislatures in the swing states will send Republican voters to the Electoral College. Though being a milestone for President Trump, Michigan and Pennsylvania have Democrats' governors, who can reject the prepared lists by the Republican legislature and thus creating theirs. In this situation, conflicting lists will have to go to Congress, propelling the Electoral College process in two dividing lines. The Electoral Count Act of 1887 stipulates that, if conflicting lists are tabled in front of Congress, each chamber will separately decide which plan should be counted. Indeed, the Senate is controlled by the Republican majority, while the House of Representatives is seated by a vast majority of Democrats. The propensity for both chambers to disagree on lists is evident. However, if disputes in the said states aren't resolved up to this point, their votes can be accepted from the counting process, leaving no presidential candidate with a majority vote of 270. These swing states alone carry 47 electoral votes among themselves. The way forward if no candidate has the electoral college majority. If no candidate shows a majority in the electoral college, the United States Congress will step in with a contingent election to provide the American people with an elected president. The House of Representatives will be in charge of selecting the president, with the Senate to designate a presidential vice. History has recorded three different contingent elections in the United States, 1801, 1825, and 1837. On the one hand, where there is a contingent election, not all House representatives can vote as each state delegation gets just a single vote. So, the party in control of more states will get the majority. So far, the Republican Party controls 26 state delegations, with Democrats having just 22. While on the other hand, each senator has a vote for the election of a presidential vice. All electoral disputes need to be terminated before January 20, the inauguration day of the new president. Suppose by noon on inauguration day, a new president isn't elected. In that case, Democrat Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, will become the United States acting president who will serve as a caretaker to the Oval Office. Pentagon's leadership and President Trump's refusal to concede to defeat. The Pentagon leadership has openly discouraged the use of the U.S. 1807 Insurrection Act by the President. They have insisted the United States Armed Services has no role to play in an election dispute. In a situation of civil unrest, the U.S. military's role will possibly center on the National Guard Reserve Force to instill law and order. As a top military advisor to President Trump, Jen Milley has openly denounced the use of unlawful order by the military on U.S. citizens, making the U.S. military neutral in an election dispute. Conclusion with a lot of controversy on who to pay allegiance to by law enforcement agencies, persons should understand that the inauguration day can't be confronted. Being the acting president and caretaker to the Oval Office while waiting for a better presidential option, the United States Armed Services will be answerable to the people through legal instruments and the one person in charge of the Oval Office. Though being an unprecedented moment, the risk of chaos is minimal.